Hey guys, welcome to the NC Barndo Build channel. My name is Brian, and for those that don't know me, our channel is all about helping you build your own post frame home. I'm not a licensed contractor, I'm not a professional builder, I'm an aviator by trade, and I'm just trying to build my own home and I'm trying to do it right. On today's video, we're gonna do something a little different than what we have shown in the past. Uh, if you're new here, we have a lot of videos, how-to videos on how we're building our post frame home, both the house and the garage. Today, we're gonna to get into the books and I wanna to talk to you guys about lumber and some things you may run into when you're picking out lumber for your specific build. First things first, let's talk about what building code I am following. Since I'm doing this build here in Alexander County, North Carolina, I have to follow the 2018 North Carolina State Building Code, which is based on the 2015 IRC code with North Carolina amendments. So if you don't live in the same area that I do, your building code is gonna be different. So make sure that you know what you are required to do for your specific area. Sometimes the county that you live in even has amendments. So make sure you check that and know that this video is all based on that information. So it may or may not apply to you. Let's talk about the details of our structure here. It is a ranch style or single floor post frame home. And as you can see, our trusses are self-supporting. There's no interior load-bearing walls in a post-frame single-story home. Let's take a quick look at our blueprints that we're using for our build. This first picture you're seeing here is the floor plan. And these are all drawn up by an engineer that's licensed in the state of North Carolina. And he's very specific about what we need to use for our floor joists. 2 by 10s southern yellow pine, number one, is what's required, and that's all due to him already knowing what the span ratings are for that type of lumber. So that makes that part of the build pretty easy. Just go put in whatever your engineer says. Another example is our roof notes. Again, a structural component. The roof rafters will be a number two SPF unless otherwise noted. Very specific at a, the minimum what he wants on this build. So that's pretty easy to do and that's the benefit of having engineered plans for your barn dominium build. So now that you know what's required by the engineer, let's take a look and see what we actually put in our floor joists that you see behind me. When you go to your lumber yard and pick out your lumber, you're gonna see all kinds of variations of stamps. This is what is on my two by 10 floor joists, SPIB number one, KD19HT with uh, 025 in the circle. The question is, is that good enough and does that meet the standards set out in my blueprints? Let's take a look and dig into what that actual lumber stamp means. Let's look at this lumber stamp and break it down. This one's a little bit different in that it doesn't actually label the specific species of wood. However, we do know by the trademark at the beginning of the stamp, the SPIB marking indicates that it is a Southern Pine Inspection Bureau product or has been inspected by them. And the only thing these guys do is Southern Yellow Pine. So if you have an SPIB trademark stamped piece of lumber, rest assured it is Southern Yellow Pine. So that takes care of two things, both the species of wood and the inspection process, who inspected this wood. The next part of it I want to talk about is the 025. So 025 is the mill identification number. And if you go to the SPIB website, you can pull up a roster of places where these guys inspect lumber. And looking at that, you can see Canfer Southern Pine Conway, South Carolina is the 025 location, and that is who actually produced this board. So it was produced by Canfer Southern Pine in Conway, South Carolina, inspected by the Southern Pine Inspection Bureau. So now we've located where this lumber has came from, who inspected the lumber. Now let's break the rest of this down. We're looking at number one, and if you remember in the blueprints, it specifically said Southern Yellow Pine number one for our floor joist. So it is a graded number one Southern Yellow Pine 2x10. 
The other thing that's important, and I'm not going to get off into the weeds too deep on this, is the KD19HT. What this stands for is the uh, way that this board was treated. So it is kiln dried to 19% moisture and it is heat treated. So the board was heated up. Any kind of bugs or anything that may have been living inside this board has been treated and killed. So rest assured that you don't have anything living inside this wood. And it is dried to a 19% moisture content, which is the standard for Southern Yellow Pine. And that is all I'm going to say about that without getting too nerdy and scientific. So in summary, this board does meet the specifications laid out in the blueprint. Now what if we get to a part in the build where there is no specifications on the prints? What, what do we go by? How do we figure out what we can use for our specific part of whatever we're working on in the build? In my case, in this video, we're looking at the interior wall framing. So we know a couple of things. We know that the walls are interior and they're non-load bearing. So knowing those two items, we need to figure out what we can exactly use for the framing on those walls. And since it's not laid out in the blueprints, we have to do some research on our own. So let's dig in to the 2018 North Carolina State Building Code. All right, let's dig into the 2018 North Carolina State Building Code. Again, we're talking specifically wall construction, interior wall construction, and I don't have any notes or any kind of clues on my blueprints on how to build this, so I need to dig into code to make sure I do this right. The first thing I'm going to look at is R602.1.1, which talks about sawn lumber or dimensional lumber, so it needs to be identified by a grade mark of an accredited lumber grading or inspection agency and have design values certified by an accreditation body that complies with DOC PS20. In lieu of a grading mark, well, we're going to stop right there because our lumber, all of our lumber has a grade mark on it, so the rest of that doesn't apply. What the heck is DOC PS20? Well, a little web Google search will tell you that it's the American Softwood Lumber Standard put out by the Department of Commerce. This is a voluntary product standard and uh, there's a couple of different revisions out there. So uh, I lost interest reading through this very quickly uh, because I really don't care how the lumber standard, so to speak, uh, is laid out. Uh, I just want to know, hey, is the agency um, using this standard or not? And the only way to know that is to go back and go to the agency, give them a call, or uh, look on their website. Maybe you can get some clues there. I'm not digging too deep into it. I'm just kind of researching, hey, is this grading company or is this inspection company located within the U.S.? If it is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a risk here, risk it for the biscuit that they are using this standard when they grade their lumber. Okay, so that's all I'm going to talk about that. Uh, I don't want to get too far into the weeds on that. You can read that document if you want. If you're having trouble going to sleep, it probably uh, probably do the job for you. Let's talk about the next section I'm interested in, which is R602.2, which is the grade of lumber that I can use for my uh, studs in my interior walls. And this says studs shall be a minimum number three standard or stud grade lumber with the exception of being bearing studs not supporting floors and non-bearing studs shall be permitted to be utility grade lumber provided the studs are spaced in accordance with table R602.35. So what this is saying is you can have bearing studs that are not supporting floors, i.e. ranch style home, or uh, non-bearing studs, which in my case, if you remember with the post frame construction, we don't have any bearing walls on the inside. Everything is bearing down on those posts and we're using our girt bars to hold those posts together. So uh, we don't have any bearing walls on the inside. So if we go to table R602.35, this kind of lays out the size, height, and spacing of our studs. 
Again, minimum standard. We're looking at non-bearing walls here, laterally unsupported stud height, and maximum spacing. For me, I just bought a bunk of 2x4s. 14 feet is the max. I'm at 10 feet, and maximum spacing is 2 foot on center. I'm going to plan for 16 on center. So again, I'm exceeding the code. This is the minimum standard. I'm going to be above the minimum standard on this. So now let's go look at this lumber that I purchased from my local lumber yard. Let's look at this lumber stamp that's found on the bunk of two by fours that I bought for this interior framing project. The first part we'll look at is the WCLB, that's West Coast Lumber Inspection Bureau, which has recently merged or was bought by Pacific Lumber Inspection Bureau, the PLIB. My understanding is both of those companies are now one. The next part is the mill location, so mill 669, not too concerned about that. It is what it is. Um, we're going to move on. I'm not investigating that. We have kiln dried, heat treated, so it's dried to a certain percentage. We don't know what that percentage is because it's not marked, but we know it's not green wood, so shrinkage should be minimal. We know it's heat treated, so we know that there's nothing organic living inside this lumber uh, because it's been treated with heat. Grading, we know it's a number two piece of lumber, which is better than what we read earlier in code where it needed to be uh, three or better or utility grade for us. And then we get to the interesting part. So what type of wood is this specific piece of lumber? Well, let's just start from the left to the right. We know SC.P, it could be Scotch Pine. There's a dash, could be N.SPR, which stands for Norway Spruce, dash DF, which stands for Douglas Fir. So it could be any one of those three species. Next, we have an I in parentheses, which means imported. If you ever see an I on any kind of lumber stamp, that is imported lumber. It did not come from the U.S. and is not one of the four recognized species of lumber that's processed here in the US. The next part, the GER, is where the log actually came from. It came from Germany, so we know this is an imported piece of lumber from Germany that is either Scotch Pine, Norway Spruce, Douglas Fir, graded to a number two, kiln dried heat treated from Mill 669, and it was inspected by the West Coast Lumber Inspection Bureau, or the PLIB, so that's what we have. Now, since it's not recognized as a species by the building code, we have run into another issue. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so now I'm a little bit nervous about all the money I spent on this lumber back here. We got 294 pieces and I'm not 100% sure that we can use it for the interior wall framing. And I don't want to get everything up and the building inspector come in and say, eh -eh, not gonna work. And I have to take it all back down and redo it. So I decided to do a little more research and the plot thickens here, so stay with me. And I'm gonna preface this next part of the video by saying that this is North Carolina specific, what I'm about to show you guys. So if you live outside of North Carolina, you really, really need to do your homework if you're going to use imported lumber, either for structural or non-structural purposes in your build because it can really get you into a pickle. So buckle up and let's talk about imported lumber specific to a North Carolina and the North Carolina building code. This took a little digging guys, but I did finally find the answer to my question here on this imported lumber. This document comes from the North Carolina Department of Insurance, specifically the Office of State Fire Marshal Engineering Division. And their main concern with this imported lumber is the gravity or wood density on it and how your nails and screws and gusset plates are gonna perform in that wood since it may not be as dense as what we're already using here in the US, uh, specifically the wood that's in the span tables for floor and roofing and what have you. Um, the other thing is the stresses. How is the bending and compression of this lumber that's from Europe? Is it going to be as good or uh, better than the four listed in the span tables? Well, they're saying we can use it, and uh, to, just to answer the question quickly here, question five, are species of number three lumber 
or better allowed to be used for studs, top and bottom plates that are not one of the four species prescribed in the code span tables. This is a Q&A document. This is the last question on it. And the answer to this question, based on the information from the PLIB, which is an attachment onto this document. I'm not going to go through that, uh, but I will leave a link to this document in the description uh, of this video below. So you can click on that and read it for yourself. But they're basically saying, any species that is graded number three or better is allowed to be used for studs, top and bottom plates. So you can use anything, right? As long as it's graded and it's uh, number three or better, uh, we're good to go. Now, as far as wood density goes, uh, there's nothing in the building code that says the wood density has to be at a minimum 0.42. What they're doing is they're getting that from SPF lumber. That's the weakest of the four in the span tables and this, the wood density or gravity of that lumber specifically is 0.42. So if you go below that, we don't know how that lumber is going to hold up to stresses and how the fasteners are going to work in that specific lumber. Now, if you look at this list here of species that are less than an SPF board, the NSPR, if you remember, that is in the stamp that's on those pieces of lumber, we're at a 0.4, the Norway Spruce North. So uh, that does fall below the SPF. I'm not too worried about it uh, because it is interior wall framing. It's not supporting anything. We're just really holding drywall and whatever you want to hang on the wall, cabinets, what have you. So I'm not too concerned about it, but um, this is just food for thought for you guys. So uh, that's the document I found online. Again, I'll leave a link below so you can read the document in its entirety. Okay, a couple of takeaways that I have from uh, my research and this whole process here. Yes, you can use European lumber in your build in North Carolina. It is legal as of right now, at least from what I can see, but legal doesn't always mean it's the best thing to use. Keep in mind that building code is the minimum standard for your home. You can always exceed that. I encourage you to exceed that. But uh, hopefully you got some information today that can help you make better decisions on your build. And if you have anything for the other viewers or for me, put them in the comments section below and we'll try to answer those. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.